Welcome back to Janice Converses. Today's video is on the fourth stage of grief, which is depression. Depression is a normal response of losing a loved one. All of us throughout our lives form attachments, relationships, and eventually the bonds that we form with precious people, they can break. Nature provides us to adapting to these losses and it's called grief. Grief has several symptoms in common with the symptom of major depressive disorder, which includes intense sadness, insomnia, poor appetite, leading to severe weight loss. Grief can also develop into complicated grief and could look a lot like depression. I have spoken more on complicated grief in the anger stage video. Where grief and depression differ is that grief tends to decrease over time and occurs in ways that are triggered by thoughts or reminders of its cause. One minute you think you are doing better, then a reminder or a memory, especially on Facebook, will surface and a thought of having to live the rest of your life without them seems unbearable. Depression, on the other hand, tends to be more persistent. Depression is an illness like any other. Reaching out for help when you experience depression is a sign of strength and you can get help and on the road to effective treatment. Depression is an illness like any other. While grief can be extremely painful, there is generally no medical indication to treat it. I personally believe that some doctors overprescribe medication and don't take the time to ask vital questions such as, have you experienced a loss lately? If so, perhaps you are grieving and don't need medication. They don't take the time to explain that depression in grief is very normal, very expected. There's no need necessarily to be medicated. Medication blocks the natural response to grief. Yes, there are times that you feel that the depression is bottomless. If you feel like the depression is more than you can handle, then seek out professional advice from a psychiatrist or a counsellor or a life coach like myself. We then can help you evaluate your depression. But just be reassured, we all get depressed, especially after a loved one dies. So let's be reminded that every person grieves differently and there is no right or wrong way to do it. Depression in grief is often viewed as an unnatural state. Family members and some friends hope that it is something their loved one will snap out of. They want to do something positive that will fix the sad feelings by making them go away. Sometimes they find it hard to sit in the discomfort of your loss and try desperately to force you to move on. The reality of grief and loss are hardly discussed. Some of us were taught not to grieve in public or some are taught in their childhood to get over grief as fast as possible, which goes against nature. I recall in my own grieving process of depression, I just did not want to see anyone. I just wanted to isolate myself, which only leads to anxiety if isolated for too long. I hardly ate. I had no appetite. At the time I had a teenage son, I told him he would need to defend for himself. 
Thank God I taught him how to cook. I just wanted to curl up into a ball and cry. I will pull the curtains to keep the room dark. And I stay like that for several weeks. My friends and my family of believers helped me get through this dark period of my life. Many prayed for me and many left me phone messages of encouragement. Some would literally mail cards to me, letting me know how much I was loved. I even received invites to go to events. Even though I was not up to going anywhere, it brought me comfort knowing that God had blessed me with beautiful, kind, hearted people who still wanted to spend time with me. It was a good feeling to be included and this was important towards my healing process. The fourth step of grief is a necessary step that begins to allow one to detach emotionally from the situation. To be honest, not many people know about grief and not many want to know much about it. Being a Christian life coach, I help my clients to look at scriptures to see what does the Bible say about grief and depression. Well, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 7, these powerful scriptures says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak. The book of Psalms is another wonderful comfort. The Psalms demonstrate the cry of someone in need of help and refuge. King David echoes our troubled hearts so poetically. If you look at Psalm 42, verse 5 especially. The message here is that depression and grief is a way of stopping time. The moment can feel endless. You may feel it hard to believe that situations or feelings will ever change or improve. I promise you, it will. The good news is, it's a season. And as we know, seasons don't last. When loss finally sets in, depression is a natural phase to prepare one for acceptance. And acceptance will be my next video on the five stages of grief. I hope you have found this video useful. Please share with someone you believe may need to draw comfort and understanding from their own journey of grief and loss. I would love to pray for you, so please leave your prayer request in the comments below. Until next time, please be patient with yourself and allow the natural process of grief to flow. As I have mentioned before in another video, grief does not have an expiration date. Take care.